Hey everybody, it's Chris Loud. Today I'm going to throw out another abstract painting warm-up challenge with a simple landscape prompt. And then I'll show you an example of the painting exercise I did with that prompt. So here are the guidelines for the challenge. You have 15 minutes to paint. Pick a color and its complementary color for your main colors. You can use any other colors, however, for simplicity's sake, try and limit the amount of colors that you're including. To start the piece, add marks to your surface with the complementary color and any other color you want, but the complementary color has to be the main one that you're using for your marks. You can use anything you want to use for the marks, including paint, pencils, markers, charcoal, pastels, etc. And really the goal here is to create a painting with an engaging yet simple landscape composition. So the colors that I chose were green and the complementary of green is red. So I'm using an alcohol-based marker to put down marks uh, uh, with my complementary color. And the nice thing about these alcohol-based markers is that they sometimes will bleed through the paint just a little bit if you have a thin layer of paint, which you'll see when I start uh, applying paint. Um, the red marks will show through in some areas. Now, if you apply thick paint, um, you will cover those marks up just, you know, kind of like any mark. Um, so uh, my, my goal was to get the complementary color down and try and let some of that peek through when I started applying paint so that the final painting had a little bit of that complementary color um, peeking through uh, from the marks that I'm making. Also using black, and I'll put a little bit of blue down uh, with the, uh, the markers as well here. So for green, I'm using phthalo green, green yellow, light olive green. I'm gonna use a little tiny bit of black and then some titanium white. And uh, this part here where you're putting down marks, you know, you're just randomly putting down marks, um, letting, you know, just kind of letting go, putting marks down and seeing if, um, you know, seeing what will show through at the end. Um, most of this will get covered up. So now I'm using a catalyst wedge to apply that phthalo green and spraying a little bit of water uh, to uh, create some drips. Now I'm using an eight by eight wood panel and one of the main reasons that I chose to use a wood panel on this was one, I had um, applied gesso to this and then I had gone back over it with some thicker portions of gesso to create a little bit of texture on that wood panel. The other thing is that these alcohol-based markers will sometimes uh, bleed through your, your um, paper, um, which I don't particularly mind, but I thought on this one uh, that I would go ahead and, and use a wood panel with that and um, and just kind of see see how how that went. Um, I'm now using a, a palette knife to scrape into to the paint I'm putting down, and then a flat brush to uh, start applying some some titanium white. And I have some big trucks driving by right now, so I apologize if if that's loud. Um, for tools that I used, uh, like I said, a catalyst wedge, I used a cheap one inch bristle brush as well as a large flat brush, a palette knife. At one point I used a paint scraper, a paper towel, and then the alcohol based markers. And at this point it's intuitive. I'm just applying paint. I'm just kind of seeing what jumps out at me. Uh, but there is a point here where I add some more phthalo green with a brush and that uh, instantly gave me an impression of a place where I've hiked behind uh, Pikes Peak. And I thought, well, well I'll kind of go that direction. Um, it's almost a little valley um, with uh, some kind of steep hills uh, covered in, in pine trees on, on both sides. And then within that, there are some little meadows. So right here, as soon as I started putting that down, that's what it started reminding me of. So I kind of went that direction. Now, if you don't know um, what this looks like, you're, you're not gonna have any idea that that's necessarily what this is. Um, so it is, you know, 
it's up to the artist. It's kind of personal um, whether or not you want to have that um, show through for other people. So, I mean, one thing I could have done to really make that stand out and, and make it look more like that scene was to put in a, a little path, an abstract path or scratching some some marks there for, for a path. But I really liked um, this as something that I knew what it looked like. Some people might look at it and see a landscape and some people might not, and I'm okay with that. Um, so just turning around a little bit, um, checking to see if, if something else jumped out at me from a different orientation. Uh, and then um, trying to get down some of the uh, some of the paint on the on the edges there. Uh, remember on these, you know, the, the challenge is supposed to be fun with really no expectation from you know a masterpiece to come through. So if you if you paint, it doesn't turn out. It's no big deal. Uh, the basic expectation here is to get you painting today. Uh, and as I've said before, this type of timed exercise encourages your mind to be more spontaneous and more intuitive. Uh, and, and the more of these exercises you do, the more you exercise your creativity. And it also gives you the opportunity to practice different skills. So I'll show you the final painting coming up uh, right here, and I'll show this to you in different orientations. Um, if you want to see more challenges like this, please let me know in the comments. If you like this, feel free to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this, feel free to subscribe. Um, and also let me know in the comments if, if you do landscape paintings, whether they're representational or abstract. Uh, I'd love to, to see what, uh, or hear what people are, are doing uh, with their paintings right now. So uh, thanks for watching and keep on painting.